this is Rob. First off, I want you to please excuse traffic noise, wind noise, any of this stuff. It's too nice a day for me to be doing this inside. I've been outside since, I don't know, four o'clock this morning because it's youth turkey weekend and I didn't want to go in the house. So, that said, I'm going to tell you the story of this drop time box that we're having scored. Last season, I put a tent blind in a spot I call the hub that I hunt. It's where six trails come down off the mountain into one funnel and go into an oak flat. In the past, it's not been ever really that great to hunt. It was a good spot during the rut. Every once in a while, you'd catch a buck cruising through. But for some reason, this year, this spot was on fire. I put the tent blind in and I used my zero trace that I had bought to hunt that spot because of the wind. And I was seeing between 12 and 5, 5 and 12 deer every time I sat that blind for the month of October. I had a lot of deer come by that I, I was hunting with my bow and I there was a lot of deer that weren't anything I wanted to shoot, a lot of does, a lot of small bucks, but then there was a lot of big bucks and most of them were usually right out of range, as of course, right? So it was the end of October, I had sat in the tent blind and I had literally just got in the tent blind. I just zipped it up, popped down two windows and I could hear deer walking. I looked up and I can see a deer walking through the the woods along a stone wall. I don't have the camera set up on the tripod. I don't have anything set up at all. I grab the camera, handhold, and go towards this deer. Zoom in. And of course, it's about 6.30, 6.45, somewhere in that zone. So it's still that gray light where I can't see any detail. I can't tell how big his antlers are. At first, I couldn't even tell it had antlers until it moved a little bit and I could see them. I zoom it with a camera, and the camera shows the deer up pretty darn good. So I zoom in on it. As soon as I really kind of get focused on it, because the camera was having a hard time focusing in that low light, the deer turns and walks back. I kind of I lose him in the camera because it's, it's dark enough. I'm having a hard time keeping him in the frame. He goes, and by the time I get back to where he was, I lose him. So we've kind of shortened and slowed down the footage of that. And you can clearly see in the footage, the deer has got something going on. And let me tell you, mister, he had something going on all right. Of course, I can't tell. I don't, I couldn't really see the deer well. I didn't think he was much to see. So I just went about my business. I didn't review the footage. I just kind of got everything opened up, sat down, had the bow here. I didn't even pick the bow up when I was filming this. Okay, so the day goes on. I see a few more deer, but nothing crazy. It gets to be about noon time, I guess, and I, I pull out. Afternoon time, these deer pretty much stop using that funnel. They're up, they're bedding. So I pull out, I get home, I eat lunch, and I start to review footage. And why I do that is every once in a while the, I'll, bl I'll glitch the camera and I'll film something for like 30 seconds on my feet or something stupid. So I just cut that out so it doesn't take up space on the card. So I go through that film footage that I, I filmed and I about died. The thing had a, had a drop time, okay? I, have, I never, I've hunted this spot for almost 30 years. I've never seen a non-typical, I've never seen a drop time, I've never seen a split brow, I've never seen anything. They're always mainframe eights or mainframe tens. No junk, no nothing, just perfect deer. So I was pretty excited. So I started calling him the mystery box. And uh, make a long story short, I never saw him again. I sat that thing four or five times. Saw a ton of other cool deer. Never got a shot at anything kind of I let a nice 10 pointer pass because he wasn't quite that big anyways never saw him again so youth weekend comes around and 
I had kind of stopped seeing as many deer at the at the hub. I decided that we were going to still hunt. So we still hunted the top of the mountain, and I'm running into all of a sudden, my nephew and I were running into rubs that are just you know trees this big around. Which you know there's some big bucks up there that I've got on camera. A tree that big around is nothing out of the ordinary. We came down off the mountain late afternoon, heading back to the house, and. Uh, walked past the field and when we walked past this field I saw a rub on the other side near a man-made pond and we went over and looked at it and I, I was just in shock uh, the size of this this rub and we took a picture of it uh, just a little while ago we went back and got a picture of it and as you can see it's 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 huge and it's on there's there's like two cedar trees on the whole property and the property is really big there's two cedar trees and of course both of them are completely rubbed up as you can see here and that one tree is huge it, it, you know I don't know how it looks in the picture to you but it's it's big it's not a it's not an 18 inch wide buck that did it, it it's something huge so I knew then that I had a big buck running around but Anyway, so let's fast forward through the deer season. I never saw him during deer season. Kind of bummed me out, but I said, okay, shed season's coming. A lot of times these big bucks I don't ever see again, but I find their shed. So we had, we had gotten two or three of the bucks that we were really looking for. Found their sheds. Everything's going good. Um, never find a drop time buck driving me nuts. I had two deer I hadn't found. The drop tying mystery buck and uh, a big framed, huge framed eight that I have. Couldn't find them. So it's getting towards the end of shed season like now. To, it's youth weekend for turkey this weekend so maybe one or two more weekends and I'm done. Uh, my nephew texts me and there's a picture with it. So I click on the picture and here's this big wide drop tine buck. And I knew as soon as I saw it. So I asked him, where did, the, where did your buddy find this? Because his friend had found it. He had told me and basically the town that he found it in is nine and a half miles away from here as the crow flies. And it was found on a power line and the power line that is that he found it on is a power line that passes by where the hunting area I mean lived really close so I went on a map and I pinned it out and looked and basically it's a highway that that power line is a highway with no houses no no buildings no nothing the whole way from where this deer was and where he was found um, the deer was is estimated to be between 8 and 10 years old. Teeth are worn down to almost nothing. Huge old buck head. And uh, so I asked my nephew to contact his friend to see if he would part with the with the rack. And he said he would. And we made a deal. I got it. And now James is going to score it. So, your guess is as good as mine. Mm -hmm.